Hello everyone, my name is Rumat and for this video I will self-coach myself in the next game after the last one I did in the previous video. I mean in the previous video I played like 3 games and I dropped somewhere to 20, 24 LP in gold 3. Now this game is the next one, somewhere at, uh, I got to 50 LP somewhere there after this I get like 27 LP per game, I have a huge win, right? And in this game I'm against Oriana and I thought this is a good opportunity to actually self-coach myself and to reflect on some of the mistakes I did. These mistakes include uh, mispositioning, uh, playing too aggressive in moments I shouldn't and ignoring the fact that they have three strong CC members and also an Oriana that can ult me. Uh, those are the uh, visible mistakes. Uh, some other mistakes are some um, micro mechanics and uh, also the mistake that I don't usually tell my team to pick an ADC like this game. Now, if you're going to notice, before we start this, I want to talk about a little on the importance, importance of the team comp in the game. Now, Talia shines usually when it has a late game ADC such as Kog'Maw, such as Twitch, such as even Tristana. And we want that, we usually want that in our games. Now, I would give a piece of advice, if it's possible to request your ADC to play this, if he knows, you can type that. If you know to play a late game ADC, can you pick it something like, and you give examples like Twitch, like Kog'Maw, and so on. Because what we do as a Talia is that we try to feed those uh, players. We try to give them kills so they can carry us later on when we drop. Now in this game, in this particular game, Lee Sin late game falls. Everybody knows that Lee Sin late game, besides the insect, is not doing that much. And so we need an ADC that can fit our team. In this scenario, we can protect Kong Mao in order to win. And this is what actually happens. Late game, and later on, besides Darius, he's doing a lot of damage when he got enough uh, gold to roll things off. And uh, if we had... Like the past games, if we had an ADC that's behind, extremely behind, like a virus or an Ezreal, then late game, as they are caster ADCs, they won't do that much unless they are extremely ahead. Uh, Kogmuel doesn't necessarily need to be extremely ahead because he will still deal damage with two or three items. Now let's start the game and remember this tip, besides uh, the other usual tips I give, remember this tip, team comp matters most when playing Talia. Besides your usual playstyle and the practice you can do in practice tool, you can think about it when it's useful to pick Talia and when not. If you're a man like me, then you can try to ask your teammates to actually pick some ADC that can hyper, hyper carry or even here I think it works even a jungler or a top liner that can be strong later on. But these are um, uh, difficult subjects to talk about because... ADC, late game ADCs do the most, do the most damage possible besides, I don't know, some other, I'd say they are the most efficient at dealing tons of damage late game. Let's jump right now straight into the game, let me check something real, right, real quick right here, okay, it works. And let's start the game, let's see where I actually failed. I went in this game with Ignite, uh, Lulu got caught here and she wasted her flash, I went in this game with Ignite so I can win the lane, which I did. But then in the mid game, you will see here that I started dying a little and then I got back up in the game doing some plays and some uh, movement around the map and with the help of my team, I actually got back in the game. What I did in this game and uh, I stopped after the 10 minutes is that I pinged a lot. As a Talia, if you ping a lot and you are not annoying, like your opponent miss it, it's not on lane, just ping it. Uh, if uh, you think Ramos will gank top, just ping top. Um, I don't think I was annoying because early game, you will see that we had a pretty good uh, stand points. And in the mid game, I actually stopped pinging my team and actually stopped being that uh, captain-like. Because I thought it's a bit annoying, but then we started dropping, we started doing mistakes. And then I said, okay, let me get back in the game and I tried to focus more and I actually... Uh, regained some control and actually fed uh, Kog'Maw. Here we can see a misposition by enemy Oriana as I always pr uh, praise uh, hit her all every time, every time she's not behind the minions. Now I will act now as a gold tree instead of a higher elo and I will say that most people in this elo actually don't stay behind their minions when they are supposed to and you can abuse that case in point this guy or girl. Sorry I don't know what your sex 
<laughs> what's your uh, genre? I don't know. Okay. Here, actually, I get huge advantage. And uh, I tried to get the kill, but not quite. Because I don't reach it because there was the minion wave coming. And it was fine. Uh, she's playing way too aggressive for an Oriana. And she does not poke as she should. Here, she will miss position. And I will just E and W for a short kill. Uh, I will get an early advantage, but then the mistakes that I will do will actually put us behind a bit because I will misposition a little and you will see what I uh, mean by that. I will uh, actually make it faster when I think it's uh, important, when I think it's not important and uh, we're going to talk about more about the matchup. The first thing I talked about was the thing comp, the next thing I want to talk about is the Oriana matchup. In this matchup you might struggle if she... Uh, does not spam Q spam you and here she missed position again and she also missed some spells um, here the enemy comes the enemy Maokai and I think I will die here if I remember correctly I will do a small mistake even though I position quite okay here uh, I think I still think I will die soon let me just check this yeah Ramos will kill me but then I'll come to lane and kill him because I don't know, lower elos, shenanigans. Uh, here I thought I could get a kill on Ramus after I, if I do a full Q on him. Uh, and also I would thought, I would think that listen as he is here, he could help me and, but yeah, that wasn't the case because he kind of failed, but uh, I don't think he died. Yeah, he didn't. And the funny thing is that these, these two guys strike here stood on mid lane and they will at least Ramos will die later on. I don't know why as a lower elo player in this division people stay on lane after they get an objective or some damage done. You should go back here. Uh, case in point. Uh, plus this Ariana moving way too deep when you don't see Darius. I don't know. Some uh, mistakes that has been done here. I will also get a kill uh, in one second or two because Ramos mispositions. Ramos comes here and goes into the tower, gets a free tower hit and I did not understand that. Still, as I say, as I said, in the Oriana matchup, you're interested mostly in dodging that ball that comes towards you and going for the EW. I went for the Ignite because I thought she might go for uh, for the I missed the cannon for the heal, which she did. And some some Orianas don't do that, but still, it's fine. Here, I wanted to do a run, but then I realized this thing was up and I had no chance. I had to back off. And uh, the target was obvious, the target was feeding Kog'Maw, I want to put the scoreboard up. Here also damaging her a little. As you can see Kog'Maw is a little behind in farm already, but he has Targon, so he kind of earned some bonus gold. I noticed here that this is happening, and Kog'Maw did die here, I mean he got caught, there's no way for him to escape. I will ult here, and I will jump in. And trying to get some uh, of the kills back. I thought here Lee Sin had discovered. But he missed Q and so we didn't get a kill there. Also I thought here we can kill her. But Lulu didn't have enough damage or obviously his support. But still we got this because people don't have that much awareness. Uh, this was his disappointment because I thought Lee Sin could uh, hit his Q. Now this game uh, could have been extremely better in many ways if he hit some Qs. Don't play junglers like Lee Sin in this ELO please because um, you don't really have the mechanics for it uh, unless you're playing this champion for a while. Here she escaped again with a lot with 16 has HP or lower. Uh, Lee Sin is very hard to play even in higher ELOs because most people don't realize that his dash is actually a skill shot. I mean Q here and uh, that's his main point of damage, as I might say, besides auto attacks and E and alt, but still on lower levels, if you hit Q, you're nothing. If you don't hit Q, you're nothing. You're useless. And that's the thing I don't really like about this, since I'm going to double click on me. Uh, here I went for the standard build. I abused the lane as hard as I could. I was actually 2 1, pretty decent score, I'd say. Died only once, stupidly, but you'll see soon. I did some mistakes that I kinda regret them because of my mispositioning and of my poor choices in terms of, I don't know, um, pathing, I might say. Here we're going to take some farm, unimportant right now. What we're interested in 
we're interested in is to help our teammates over the map. Here Darius even gets a kill to versus one. This game should be won at this point. Now here he gets greedy and dies to Maokai, which is not cool because he already had the advantage. And we're doing exceptionally fine at this point, having uh, over two, 2k gold. I mean exactly 2k somewhere there. Uh, here I'm going to get a kill if I remember correctly, or she's going to barely escape. I don't. Yeah, she, she's going to escape because uh, she, I didn't have my wall yet, and so she had a free escape pad. But I thought, okay, we catch Ramos. And Ramos saw us going here and knew probably that we're going to wait. I didn't check, I didn't bother to check that bash, so that was a mistake. Anyway, heading back mid, as you can see, uh, I noticed at this point that bot lane is not horribly losing, so. Uh, I didn't spam gank there and tried to keep um, abusing this lane. As you can see, I'm 30 CS ahead and two kills over her. And that was fine. I also get here objective, this objective. And uh, after this, the mistake was that Lee Sin Eden came mid and we took this tower with Herald. The mistake was that he went top. Uh, mid control would have been better. Also, we got some uh, Drakes. And here, the problem is that they back off. They don't back off when it's necessary. And... If you see your teammates doing an objective on the other side of the map and their jungler is not there, it's obvious that their jungler cooks something up, cooks something up and he's probably be bottom lane or at you. And here the problem, the general problem is that uh, they die. I mean, yeah, I, I, I think I even pinged Dorian, I'm not so sure if I did, but still uh, it was irrelevant as Kogma already died and uh, the thing, the deed was done mostly. At least we get first tower here. If uh, I think they, he will plant that uh, herald, and we're doing fine. Uh, at this point, Kogmao is losing, so my target should be to help him. As I said, if you have a late game ADC and he's struggling, you have to gank that lane. You have to try to help them, uh, and he's struggling because of honestly because of mispositioning, he didn't do misplays, mi micro misplays, he just got too greedy and uh, and died randomly because uh, their ram also just camped the lane when he saw they were going like that. Here I get also a kill if I remember correctly. Okay, good. And I here at this point I didn't want to flash or ult. I could have ult to escape but I said... Uh, that keeping my flesh and my ult is better for the next gank. Uh, I could have tried to trick him, as you can see he doesn't have flash. I could have gone here and flash. I uh, could have escaped that and ult. But I thought that I'm not going to be able to help this Kog'Maw if I do that. and Or to use my ult further on. Uh, and uh, I think the decision was questionable here. I'm not completely sure yet if I did the right thing, but still. Here I spam pinged Darius to switch lanes as he was pushed, and he actually understood and did that. And after I push mid here, uh, we're actually interested in taking mid tower and bottom lane, trying to help them. Here Oriana mispositions again, we got her so well in this game, we actually camped her uh, pretty much. And Ramos, even though he kind of was nearby mid, it wasn't enough. Uh, here, actually bottom lane wins 2 versus 3 because uh, Kog'Maw does pretty fine and here I'm trying to help him. I realized, okay, fuck it, we can get some kills. And uh, as you can notice here, we are actually getting a kill on Kog'Maw, on, uh, for Kog'Maw, and that, that was a lot in early game. He didn't have any kills, okay? He has a kill now. Uh, I will die here. Again, I had flash. Uh, could have used it, but again, Maokai was already in range and I maybe would have killed Kogma. I had to flash in the other direction so I, she could have shielded me. That was a mistake also. Uh, let me put some speed on this. As I said, standard build and I went for these boots so I can ult more often. I recommend going for the maximum cooldown reduction when you're having an ADC that you need to feed. Um, this is in most games happening, but uh, the theory in this game is, okay, this guy will surely carry late game, will surely do much more than I will do. Uh, we're interested more in this item than Sork Boots. And as you can notice here, they don't have yet any magic resistance, they won't have for some time. 
Uh, I will get Landris anyway for those magic resist items here. I kind of fucked up. I understood that I was being followed and I said, okay, Darius is fed, we can fight this. And I should have flashed here. Should have flashed way faster. But still, in this point, Darius is at that moment when he just face rolls people. And this was a perfect ult by Lee Sin. And we're actually turning this around. So the idea of fighting them wasn't bad. It wasn't bad at all. But still, this cues by Lee Sin kind of drag us down. As I said, please don't play that champion if you're not master on hitting skill shots. And what happened actually here? We created a 3 versus 5 fight in which we actually uh, killed more than they killed, uh, or it was even, but still we got this tower here, and, and this guy is actually running randomly here. He will escape if I remember correctly. Uh, but we got the bottle and tower then. The macro game is on our advantage huge time. You can see this, there is a only 4 kills difference, but 5k gold. Think about it. We have all the towers up. And I'm 30 CS ahead, even though I died four times, that was bad. I kind of forced some fights in which we one got advantage in the fight and two we got external objectives. So you have to uh, always assess these kind of things. Here I will do a huge mistake. I'm at 3-4, I'm doing fine. I know I can beat Maokai, I have my ignite up. I know I can kill him. Uh, but the mistake I do is miscalculate my mana, okay? And getting extremely greedy. Okay, look, we're beating him, okay? It's obvious we're going to win this. I'm not really obvious, but still, we're having advantage. If I miss this W, I won't win. But I did hit him. And he flashed perfectly here. But the mistake here was I missed that E. I should have done here a full Q instead of that. And then I just face rolled <coughs> around the map. Sorry, my voice is destroyed. Here, I thought if I hide here... They wouldn't find me, and I could have recalled here, but then I got greedy again. Then I got greedy again. I thought, with Lee in help, we could have killed uh, this guy. The moment I got seen by this, he should have just jumped on him, but he didn't, so we kind of died here. I died to this, and uh, as they were positioned here, they seen Lee Sin, and just as being pushed by Darius, they actually caught him in this point. So this mistake was on me. I think this was the first major mistake I did in this game, and the good thing about it is that we didn't lose any major objectives. Uh, I mean, if you watch closely, bottom lane moved mid, the only thing that we might lose, we will lose, is the bottom tower. Here a fight starts, and I'm going to put this on fast forward. Okay, back to mid lane. Back to more feeling on Kogma. Kogma is doing very fine on farm. I mean, he's uh, tied to me. And the only one who's doing well on farm in their team, besides uh, Maokai, which is, who is mildly behind, it's uh, Sivir. And Sivir has a, a lot of farm right now, but she's she will be strong just way into the late game uh, after she finishes some more items. And Kogma will be just more useful. Here, we predict well this uh, engagement by them. We just all run and backed off. Uh, Tak didn't really, didn't really jump into the fight that well. He could have done that alt further away, and uh, Maokai should have engaged. This alt was late, and Maokai should have engaged faster. And we did fine here by running this way. And I'm staying here at tower. I uh, run into Sivir. And I just do a full Q. I run back into this Q by doing a mistake. Uh, we're fine at this point. I said, okay, no more deaths. Okay, no more deaths. But then I still play cocky and greedy. Uh, and I don't remember if... I don't think I will die again then in this game. No, I didn't. Here was a perfect uh, CC by Darius. And this was a point in which I should have W'd. But then this ball scared me and this Q poke. I don't know why I went this back here. Oh, also ran with that. That's why I went back. Uh, and at this point, you should notice this ball in the middle of uh, your teammates. I'd rather not get hit by Oriana alt here, because that would have made us lose. And she places the ball here, and she ults. Um, that's why I stayed back. I had to dodge that here. I planned a WE on Severe, which was good. 
which made them actually use some defensive spells by uh, Oriana. Sivir still has her heal up, but she used it, which is, was at half effectiveness. Here I do a perfect cute, but again, they flash and they uh, escape my spell. Lulu does a perfect ult, and as you can see at this fight, we're actually doing extremely well. Uh, we're actually over them. Here, I didn't have mana for two spells. Holy shit, what I did. What did I do? Anyone remembers at what minute we were? Oh my god. Maybe here? Ah, my tower was dead. Ah, I will showcase that. I will cut this, probably. This was the fight that I actually showed. Where were we? Come on. Here, back to action. I think I misclicked, I definitely misclicked. Again, they were low, uh, and we had the edge on this. Let me fast this up. And at this point, I had ult up. I knew I could ult, but I had no mana for it. And I wasted my Q in minions, which was a mistake. But then I just said, okay, I'll still ult. Maybe if I ult and uh, position nearby them, I will get a kill. And here I actually make Ramos turn around and they all three turn around and this ensured another kill for us. Which was just by pressing ultimate. My ultimate. Okay. Here we actually speed things up a bit because it's just a tower. You're actually taking this and uh, at this point I start bringing Baron because we have enough advantage to actually take it fast. Kongma has already two items, I mean we'll have two items soon. Uh, after she, he finishes the second item and uh, they also stay around Baron. I think they will start doing Baron here and we also see it. We have this word here which shows us uh, that they started Baron and so here will be another fight, uh, a big fight in which we win. We actually ace them here if I remember correctly but uh, let me stop this. This, this thing I don't understand. They seen Lolo bot and they probably knew Kog'Maw is here. As a macro game thingy, they went for the free Baron. Technically, if they position correctly here, they would have gotten it for free. But still, in this scenario where you have a Fedaris with a Warmong nearby and a Lissin that can just dash in, dash out and steal it, and also a pretty well farmed Thalia, you kinda risk it at this point. Your CV is not full HP, your summoner spells are not up, besides, I don't know, Oriana Flash. Ramus flash and Maokai flash, even even time. They, they have more flashes. They, they have flashes available, not more flash than us, but uh, they do have flashes available. Uh, but heals are down, and this HP won't heal up because you don't have any life steal or anything that could heal you. And you can notice here what's going to happen. Darius goes in. I do this W on their tanks. Uh, the W was pretty bad, but Darius can tank. Darius needs just to stack at this point his, uh, his full Q. And here he hits a lot of people. Severe gets caught in the in this, gets dragged by Darius, and they all just fall down, as you can notice. Also at this point, Kogma with two items starts to, starts to really deal damage. Uh, you can notice this by his DPS on Baron, which is huge. Uh, Oriana is here, I have ult, I should have followed her at this point, I still follow her but after this buff, and I take this and I say fuck it, we're going for it, and I predict the direction in which she goes and just go for the full Q and free kill there. As I said like, at the beginning of this video, Kogumao's late game starts to show off, it's just the mid game here, but his damage is huge. At this point, uh, he kind of gets caught. Uh, I say, okay, we try to kill at least one. We get the kill on Ramos, which is good. And then I back off here soon. Okay. Back off, I said. <laughs> okay, not yet, but still. I will back off, I promise. Because I have a lot of gold. I didn't even recall before that. I should back at this point, yeah. And Lulu got caught mid. Uh, we're going to lose two team members here. And I'm moving on towards mid lane. They, here they are doing a mistake. They kind of dive here. Uh, I say mistake. I, I did a battle here. 
I say mistake because uh, they are under a tower and Kog'Maw is nearby and just spits on them uh, and deals a lot, again, a lot of damage. If I had ult here, I could have gotten way more kills, way gen, I mean one or two at least. Here I didn't notice that. Uh, Sivir and Talking goes there and try to recall, but Sivir wastes more time, so this actually enables me to play the game a little more. Now, the main tips and the main points I want you to drag out of this is that you have, as a Talia player, to try to feed others, to try to feed your carries, and uh, if you don't have carries, you have to ask for your carry to play a carry or to duo with someone that can play something along the lines of a hyper carry jungler or ADC. And here I take a free tower. I have to play defensive for that, and I don't know what Oriana does. She, she gives me free kills, more free kills. She's pretty tilted at this point to nine. Here I actually escape. This time I actually use my abilities to escape uh, because uh, we're kind of in the mid game, and I give a lot of gold here by the shutdown. I I'm at nine kills now, up from the three I had at the beginning of these fights that we had. And soon enough, we will do the final fight and win it. But still, as I said, I don't find early on, even though I died a lot and my KDA was trash and I died more than three, four times, the, uh, the logic, the logistic behind it was, wasn't that all bad. Uh, here he got a kill because we got kills in fights after I died more than they actually got. And we also got some other trades. Uh, the only certified death that was horrible was that uh, that I went into Ramus and I died. I didn't play. That was the one time where playing with clans actually would have helped. And as I phrased and said before, at this point, even if you didn't have an extremely fed, there is just a random tank that could face front everything, we would have won. Okay, we would have won because even though they have Kog'Maw, they have Ramus and Maokai and Tav. They wouldn't be able to reach uh, our Kog'Maw unless Oriana does a good ult. He also has magic resist for it, and but he has the main thing he has is that he has a Lolo, and also I listen and me and Darius, which are in front of him. Okay, we die before him. We're supposed to die before him. You're supposed to die before your ADC uh, if he's uh, at least ahead. And uh, what I want to say here is that. He started the game pretty bad. He wasn't an ADC that played perfectly on lane and got fed later on uh, because he did the solo plays that put him up. Uh, he simply got the opportunity to get fed because his team allowed him to. Normally, if he didn't have a top laner or a mid laner that were doing fine in farm and uh, kills, we would have lost this. Okay, so the mistake he did here was that he played too aggressively early on and Ramos just abused that. When I was top lane, when I was doing this buff, Ramos abused that. And you should, if you know he's going to gank here, if you know you're not going to see Ramos in this zone of the jungle, as a Talia player, you should try to spam pings your teammate because you will be friend, your, your pings are your best friend, you will be friend with those pings because you will befriend them because... Uh, you will ping when you go bot, you will ping when you don't. You will ping when you go bot and you will ping top because maybe the enemy mid laner will go top. You will ping bot because maybe the enemy mid laner will come bot. Or you will ping anywhere because the enemy jungler might be there. So you have to be resourceful with those pings. You don't spam them, you just do two or three times per case, per scenario. And in these scenarios are often. And if you practice it and you play them accordingly, your teammates' map awareness actually increases because you're actually helping them see the things they don't. And this is mostly for the players that want to climb with Lia only. Uh, I'd say you have to act sort of a, as a sort of a team captain because your roams actually dictate the pace of the game when you're playing against champions that cannot roam. And this is a thing that it's most important in those in these kind of games. Your kind of the leader of the team if you're thinking it's right and also in these scenarios i try to act as a leader because i pretty sure i have more macro game 
knowledge about, uh, than this than some of these people not all of them some of them are pretty good and um, i kind of realized when the enemy jungler is not at my buff is probably going bot to gang them and so on to try i try to do these readings and even if he's not there it's better for them to lose a wave to back off than to give a kill as it happened in our example in this bot lane <sighs> but still uh, these are just some tips um and I'm thinking to more to make more of these videos. I don't know if it helps that much as I feel, but I really hope it does. And what can I say? I hope to see you guys in the next videos and I really hope that I'm going to get some uh, information back, some feedback if you think that these videos are actually worth and if I just talk randomly and try to talk about the game in general and I talk to too much about the other teammates and not that much about me, about the Lee, I mean. Um, you can tell me and you can, uh, in faces, and you can speak your mind about what you want me to talk about more. And I really, I'd really love to hear some feedback from you guys, okay? Uh, that's about it. And see you next time, guys. Okay? Goodbye.